my name is Jenna from Capital Christian Center in Bismarck, North Dakota. We hope this Bible study encourages you today. So grab your notebook, a pen, and your Bible and get ready to dig into the Word of God. Hello CCC ladies. Today is Terrific Thursday and I want to welcome you to week four of our Bible study on Daniel, Trustworthy by Kay Burnett. Um, you know, this is week four, and it just seems like the pandemic as well has been going for four weeks, and I thought that was kind of significant. Today, we're going to be talking about Daniel in the lion's den, and you may kind of feel like you're in a lion's den, and um, we're going to get some encouragement from the Bible study today, and I just pray it's a blessing to you. But before we get started, I always like... Um, to share a few funny things. And I saw some things that made me chuckle this last week and I just wanted to share them with you. The CDC is now recommending that everybody wear a mask at home. It's not to prevent the coronavirus spread, but it is to prevent the spread of us all being overweight. Um, also, you may look at your financial budget from this last week and it may look something like this. Gas, zero. Sporting events, zero. Shopping, zero. Movies, zero. Concerts, zero. Grocery shopping, $5,000. <laughs> I thought those things were cute and just made me laugh this week. Today we're going to be talking about being steadfast. And I can't help but to believe we're on this um, Daniel journey. And here he is again, being steadfast and praying to the Lord and being faithful in a very hard time and I know this is really tough for a lot of people and it's somewhat uncomfortable for all of us but today we're going to study how David or David excuse me Daniel was faithful even in the den of lions let me ask you a few questions to think about while we're watching the video today and then when we have a little discussion on it afterwards how are you sleeping these days Daniel slept in a lion's den and I think he got a pretty good night's sleep. God sent the angel and God shut the mouths of the lions. That's pretty fantastic. Also, it says King Darius hardly slept at all. He realized he was tricked and he let his ego get in the way. And he hardly slept at all because he was concerned for his friend Daniel. But he slept in the palace. Daniel slept in the den of lions and he slept better than the king. That's pretty fantastic. One other thing I wanted to ask you, not only how are you sleeping, but what's been eating at you? You know, the people who got Daniel, uh, tricked him into um, getting, or tricked the king into placing this edict that anyone who worshiped anyone but the king would be thrown into the den of lions, they were jealous of Daniel. And so guess what happened to them? We don't even like to read this part of the story. But in the story, the people who tricked the king into signing this edict or this verdict that was irreversible, um, and he really regretted it. He realized he let his ego get in the way of taking care of his friend Daniel. The people who signed that, it says immediately when King Darius learned that Daniel was saved and the God... Um, the Almighty God had delivered him from the mouths of the lions. He threw all those evil leaders into the lion's den. And this is sad. It said, and their wives and their children. And it said before they ever hit the floor of the lion's den, they were already eaten alive. What's been eating at you during these last four weeks? There's some things that's been eating at me. You know, Daniel prayed. Three times a day, the Bible says, on his knees. You know, we don't have to literally get on our knees, but that was the position of his heart. You know, it wouldn't hurt us to pray if we can get on our knees three times a day about all that's going on in our country, all that's going on in our world. Maybe I just would encourage you to do that. I'm encouraging myself at the same time. Maybe that's what we can learn this week from being steadfast that we could get on our knees or at least apply our hearts in prayer three times a day that this pandemic, God's will would be done and people would be saved and people would be healed. So as we um, turn to look at the video now, I just want to encourage you, 
We want to learn from David, uh, I keep saying David today, from Daniel's example. We want to be steadfast. And that's the prayer of my heart today, that God, would you just please make me steady? The story of Daniel and the lion's den. You know, this story really fascinates me because this is a true story. It happened in the Bible. Just like a, a few weeks ago, we studied about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They went into the fiery furnace, and they came out unharmed and didn't even smell a smoke. It, it's a true story. This is the Bible. This is the Word of God. God delivered them, and they were serving and honoring God. So Daniel and the lion's den is also a fascinating story, but I want you to remember it's a true story. It's not a made-up story. Daniel was actually thrown into a pit. It was like a hole in the ground, and the lions were down in there. They threw him in the hole. They put a seal on the top, and the Bible tells us that they... Um, put like a clay covering on the top and the, the king actually took his insignia ring and, and stamped that. And if anybody messed with it, because it was clay, they could see that they had. Um, so all night long, Daniel was in the lion's den. You may feel like you're experiencing something in your life and all night long, you feel like you've been in the lion's den. Two things happened that were miraculous. One, God sent his angel. Isn't it great to know that God still has his angels? The Bible says they're ministering spirits that do the will of God. Um, and God sent an angel, and God shut the mouths of the lions. Daniel was not eaten for dinner. And I love um, just this spot. I love the veggie tales. Many of you have probably watched them with your kids or whatever. Uh, Larry the Cucumber was supposed to be Daniel in the story. And of course, they threw him down in the pit and the king went to his room and he was troubled all night and he came back in the morning and he said, Oh, Daniel, did your God deliver you from the pit? And Larry the Cucumber hops out of the pit and says, Thanks for the pizza. <laughs> so he was implying that he had a good night and they had pizza. That's just a little silly thing. But honestly, this is a true story. Daniel slept in the lion's den. The angel of God shut the mouths of the lions and he got a good night's sleep. How are you sleeping? You know, through this pandemic and the coronavirus and worrying about going to the grocery store and um, some of us are worried about finances and different things. We don't know when things are going to get back to normal. We don't even know if we want things to get back to normal, to be honest, because normally we were all probably too busy. We don't want to be too busy. We want to be steadfast. And maybe God's going to use this somehow to bring many people to Christ, which I think he's already doing. But also, maybe he's going to use it in our lives, that maybe they won't go back to the way they were too busy. Maybe we're too busy to pray three times a day. Maybe right now when we're at home more and we're with our families more, maybe we need to pause morning, noon, and night like Daniel and look toward the heavens and cry out to God. Ask God to heal our land. We know the number one pandemic of the whole world is that people need Jesus Christ. Their eternal security is at stake. Not just their um, earthly existence or getting the coronavirus or um, going bankrupt or um, being afraid for the future of their family. None of those things are the bottom line. The bottom line is there's a pandemic that's been around forever. And we all need the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. So my prayer is, help us as Christians. Maybe that we could pause and pray three times a day. Like I said earlier, it doesn't have to be on our knees, but it's the position of our hearts. Take time right now, especially while you have a little bit more time. Spend time with and pray to the God above all gods, the one true God. Ask him to heal and save our land, to heal and save our world, and also to drive this virus from our land, but to allow it to have his will and his purpose in our lives, that all of us would be more like Daniel, that we'd be steadfast. No matter what happened to Daniel, no matter what threats he experienced, he prayed, <laughs> he prayed 
three times a day. He prayed three times a day. He got on his knees. Maybe we could do this. Maybe we would see a difference like he did. How um, steadfast am I? I've been asking myself. Well, the truth is, I really feel kind of like an emotional roller coaster. I've never liked uh, roller coaster rides. They often make me sick or nauseous. But honestly, sometimes I feel like my faith is kind of like the circumstances, what's going on. I allow my faith to be strong, and then something comes along and it kind of um, puts me on an emotional roller coaster. I don't like that. I don't want to be that way. I want to put my faith and my trust in God. God helped Daniel to be steadfast. I want to be like Daniel. One other thing I saw in the study this week is that Daniel just kept doing the right thing. He was taken from his homeland and placed into a, a totally different uh, culture, an ungodly culture in Babylon, but he did the right thing. He honored God. He didn't eat the rich foods of the king. He ate the foods that were uh, normal to his customs and practices. Then um, they were threatened to bow before this big statue um, that the, the king had decreed everyone had to bow before that statue. They refused not to. They weren't ugly or dishonorable. They just refused to bow before something that was not the one true God. Then his friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, were thrown into the fiery furnace. Again, they said, our God can deliver us, but even if he doesn't, we won't deny our God. Then here's Daniel in the lion's den. They said, you cannot pray to anybody but the king. And Daniel did what he always did. He went home and he prayed three times a day to his God. I want to be like Daniel. I don't want to be when all these circumstances in our lives come up, whether it's financial, physical, um, spiritual, mental, whatever, emotional. I don't want to be like an emotional roller coaster. I want to be like Daniel. I want to continue to call out to my God the one true God, and ask him to make me steady. And so that's what Daniel was. I guess I just want to close with a, a, a couple of thoughts today. And here they are. Everybody has lions to face. Boy, I just can't imagine being Daniel and having to be thrown into a pit of lions. I don't even want to imagine doing that. Would I do the right thing? Would I be so afraid that I would deny my God? I pray not. I want to be Dan like Daniel. I want to be steadfast and true. Um, I want to cry out to my God. You know, it says he prayed three times a day, but I believe he also prayed in the lion's den. Can you imagine him crying out to God and an angel appearing? Can you imagine him crying out to God and maybe he rested on one of the lions and the lions could not open their mouth? I don't know. But I want to ask you these questions that I asked you at the beginning. What's been eating at you? Sometimes things um, emotionally bother us and eat at us and try to wear away our faith. What's been eating at you? Maybe try praying three times a day about it. How have you been sleeping? Daniel was able to sleep and rest in the lion's den and wake up refreshed and renewed because God protected him. King Darius, the Bible says, did not sleep all night. He was troubled in his palace. Daniel slept in the lion's den. Darius did not sleep in his royal rich palace. The difference was who was serving the Lord. Okay, I'll close with this, and this is my prayer. Daniel was steady. Daniel was devoted to God in prayer. And Daniel obeyed God no matter what. I want to close with Psalm 51, verse 10. And this is really my prayer for myself today. And I'm sure you guys will join in this prayer with me, but this is what it says. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. I did look up the word steadfast, and I forgot to tell you what I found. It said immovable, fixed, unchanged, steady and unwavering. I love the songs and it's from the book of Lamentations in the Bible. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. 
They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Daniel slept in the lion's den and he woke up in the morning and God's love for him was steadfast. It kept him and my prayer for you, my prayer for me is the Lord's steadfast love will keep us and God will create in us a clean heart and renew his spirit within us, a steadfast spirit that will honor, devote ourselves and obey him. Thanks for joining. Next week is week five and we're gonna be talking about vision. So join us next week on Facebook at 11 a.m. and let's just call it Next Thankful Thursday. Thanks for watching this Bible study. Make sure to find us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel.